All right, this is X15. This is kind of a companion video to one I did yesterday about this same house. And right now these are pony walls. So there's a there's a 30 inch stucco wall here at the top and then the lower part of the pony wall, pony wall is a room divider. And that works pretty good for a lot of situations when you want these arches because you can just stick a window in there or a pass through or a door and and use that to generate the arch. But it can cause problems. You can see one over here. And there's another one over here. And then back over here. There's another one over here. And originally, that's one, that's one giant window. And then there's a little window up there. So I'm not really sure how all this was done to start with, but it's done a little differently. And one of the problems is that you can see here that there's nothing filling in right here and there's nothing filling in over here. Sometimes, like right here in the middle, that seems to, that seemed to fill in, but over here it doesn't and over here it doesn't. So there's some, there's some disadvantages, I think, to using this. And like I said in the other video, I would do these with solids because I don't think Chief is going to frame these, if you're worried about framing, I don't think Chief is going to frame these like somebody would build them. You know, nor, probably you would have a, either this column is structural or you'll have a, a post inside it that's structural coming up to a, a beam that's up here at the top. And the way this is set up, you're going to have some overhang out here. So, I think that, that, um, I'd use solids. And especially if you're just looking for a, a 3D view, I don't know what the purpose of this, this is. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff missing over here. There's, you know, it's, I don't know if it's just the, You know, maybe they're just doing an addition or something, and this this is they're just um, fleshing out the details on this side of the house for whatever reason. So what I'm going to do is come over here, I'm gonna click the wall tool, and shift select these three walls, open them up, and let's change them to just room dividers. And say OK. It looks like that needs to be done like that. And there's still some windows there, so I'm going to select the window tool and shift select. And delete those windows. So now we just have a room divider separating those. I'm going to take a 3D solid, open it up, I'm going to make it 20, 20 and a half tall. And 30 by 30. Four to bottom, 101. So that's going to sit on top of the column. And okay. And then I'm going to center that on the column that way. And 
that way. So let's look over here. Now the reason I did that was because since we're working in 3D, that gives me some easy snap points. Already knew, I checked the column, already knew the column was 101 inches tall. And it looks like Looks like it's not perfectly where it needs to be, but it's good enough for what what we're showing. You can see that it this is a moldy polyline up here that creates this this trim. And you can see that this 3D solid hangs out a little bit in front of this side, but I'm not gonna worry about that. Anyway, I just wanted a, a square box here. And I'm I'm going to Select that. I wish they would say down down here in the bottom. I wish that they would move this 3D solid way from way over here in this left hand side, somewhere else. I've asked for them. I've made a suggestion before to be able to move the status bar, this this bar in the bottom with all this stuff up here at the top. Because that's where I'm looking for all this stuff. I, the first thing I always do is move my edit toolbar, which is right here. I drag it up from the bottom and dock it up here at the top because that's where all my other stuff is. And when you've got a, you know, a big monitor, I'm using a 32 inch monitor. You're swiveling your head up and down a lot trying to see what's what. So anyway. And I've not I've not done hardly any customizing to X15, so I don't I don't have no, my normal toolbars set up. So I'm going to come over here and edit, copy and paste in place. I'm going to do that again, copy and paste in place, and then while that's selected, I'm going to center it there, and then let's choose that other one and hopefully that'll center over here so now we've got our three um, squares here and I think what I'm going to do is take a back clip cross-section So now I need to fill in between these. So again, 3D solid. X15 seems to be a lot better at picking up snaps on elevations, but it doesn't pick up in snaps. And I've, I've suggested and complained about that too. You cannot, It'd be nice to be able just to draw this out and snap it where you want it up here, but there's no end snaps. So you have to draw it, select it, drag it over. And then drag it up. And of course it's, it's not going to, it's not going to find, it'll, it'll find the snap here. So now I can just take this with this bottom edge selected, convert it to an arc. And of course it never it never arcs correctly. And you'll notice that arc how faceted it is. So I can go to selected arc. And check automatic facet angle, and I'm going to make this two. Let's see if that smooths it out a little bit. This needs to be 30 inches deep.
And what it did is that it, it came back at us. So if we look at this in 3D, you'll see where it is. So let's move it 30 inches that way. And go back over here. And then this needs to be 12 inches tall, this arc. So I'm sure that there's an easier way of doing this. I'm going to take this, and it should snap right there. I don't need those anymore. So let's take this one. Copy and reflect around that one. Now, ideally, you want these all to be one piece. So I'm going to select this one, this one, and this one. And I'm going to union them together. And I do not want to retain the original objects. Now, here, here's something else that I've complained about. And this, this is really a downside to doing this. As you see how this art faceted again. So let's open that up. Try two again. I've, I've, I've said that this needs to be, it needs to maintain this. It shouldn't automatically change. So now we just need the end pieces. So what I'm going to do is undo a couple of times. Isn't that nice the way those 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 lines disappeared? These are these are still individual pieces, but now we don't have any lines in here. So back over here, I'm going to select that. I'm going to copy, paste in place, and then we'll rotate it point to point. Right there. And then let's, I think these need to be like that. So we can select that. over there and then we need to union all those together so I'm going to select the 3d solid tool shift select here and 
I don't want to retain the original objects. Now we have to go back and Well, this is not good. It looks like we're it looks like now that these are all union together. Well, there we go. I clean that one up. That didn't work. Let's try over here. Now, yeah. looks like these did not get unioned. So let me select those. Or maybe they're just not correctly aligned. Because you shouldn't see that that line there. Yep, now these are now these are all off because I because I unioned. Yeah, that seems like a lot of work, but let's go back here and yeah, it looks like these are just slightly, slightly off. So if I if I snap that there. Let's switch back over to standard. Make that stucco. Now everything's seamless, no artifacts.
And one of my new favorite new features of X15 is that you can turn this thickness down. Before one was the lowest, and so now you can go down to something less than one. So the lines are, so you, you get um, textures and you get those lines. And when you look over here, because of the way this was built with a window up in here, you get extra lines. And with the solid, I notice that there's an extra line right here. And of course there's an extra line right in here that shouldn't be there. So this line over here kind of tells me that that maybe something's not aligned perfectly. You know, like these columns. I think that I was, when I reflected these things over to this side, I think I was reflecting around this, this, uh, rectangular or square 3D solid I put up here above the column. And so if these columns are not exactly lined up, maybe there's a little, little deal over here. The other thing I noticed on this plan is that and this is has nothing to do with anything else. I noticed that these three pe are in three pieces, and um, that's a three D solid. It doesn't say what these pieces are. That's a three D. Okay, so they're all three D solids. So you could. You could union all those together. And then move them at once. Over here. You can move that. I'm going to undo that. Undo sure takes a long time. And here you're moving the entire thing which is probably what you want. The other th the other neat thing on 3D solids like this, this is another neat new feature. I don't know what it does to um you know poly polygon counts or whatever those things are. But we can now uh, fa uh facet 3D so let's uh that's what I want three sixteenths is good, so I'm gonna say okay. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna facet three D. I don't know if that did anything. Let's do that again. Or fill it. Fill it is the word. Oh well, that's not working. Well, that's it. This this drawing this drawing this um these arches is what I wanted to show. 
And of course it takes when you're when you're yakking about it while you're doing it it takes 10 times longer than just doing it 